Hello everyone, Kanasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. We are going to be joining the EVE-class interplanetary vessel at the beginning of this episode where we are going to dock, undock even the Manta that is on the side and attempt to go over to Gateway's second closest moon, Comb, and we are going to attempt to discover some of the secrets that that celestial body may contain. Obviously, we finished up this in the last episode, realizing that we did not have an awful lot of supplies on this. Well, we have no supplies whatsoever on this Manta. No, so in order for us to do this mission, we're going to have to do this incredibly quickly. We're going to have to do a whistle-stop tour of Comb and try and get Maximus Kerman, Ziggy Kerman III, and Cullum Kerman back to that EVE class as soon as possible essentially. And the EVE class, I know there have been obviously several recommendations for what that should be called. And I think I'm going to go with, it's just going to be the RSAS EVE, the Road Space Alliance Ship EVE. Because a lot of people have suggested that the first ship of its class should be named after the class. Or even the other way around, the, the name of the class is named after the first ship of its kind. So that's what we're going to go for now. Obviously, as I have said, we are going to be building more of these. So there will be future chances to name them. There have been some absolutely fantastic suggestions in the comments that I did really enjoy that we might look at at a later date. Anyway, we are now at Comb and we are trying to use the atmosphere of that planet as much as we possibly can to actually slow us down. I would quite like to land in the day. Obviously, if we land in the day, then we can actually see what we're doing. And Maximus Kerman, Ziggy Kerman and Cullen Kerman well, they can stretch their legs and they won't bump into any ginormous rocks that they may encounter on their trip over around the surface of the planet. Obviously, or not even the planet, the moon. The moon does have water, so I was trying really hard to avoid a water landing because I know that the Manta will be able to take off and will be able to launch if we land on the land. However, if we land in the water, things might get a little bit tricky. So I was really trying to fine tune my final descent so that we did land somewhere where hopefully, well, we're not going to be swimming. That's why I think I bring up landing guidance. And yes, I am checking the impact biome and it says that we are going to be landing in the Midlands. Obviously that will change because we are coming down and we are going to be slowing down a little bit faster before we actually get down all the way. Anyway. I kept this in because combs, well, the, the winds around comb are incredibly quick. They are moving probably about 800 meters per second. I think when we were going about, yeah, around 800 meters per second, that's when we were kind of matching the speed. So it's kind of weird seeing that and then moving incredibly quickly, but we were able to successfully land. And what we're going to be doing is just gathering all of the science that we possibly can. And I noticed something. I saw something as we landed, and you can probably see it just underneath the altimeter. It's moved ever so slightly now, but there is something very peculiar on the surface of home. It is a ginormous object that we have no idea about. So these three Kerbals are going to strap themselves in and use the Manta to drive down a little ways so we can take a closer investigation. It is definitely not a natural construct. No, this is most certainly artificial, and we absolutely did not send anything like this over to Comb. So this begs the question, who has been here before? What is this strange device? Will we come back later on and find out more? Absolutely. So I did have a look around to see if there was any way of gaining entrance into this, and unfortunately, I couldn't find anything. So I think what we're going to do when we have a more capable mission of coming over to Gateway, we will bring along some sort of hover device, which I think would be really cool. We get some sort of helicopter shaped device that will be able to fly all around the LMS Sanguine, which is what it has printed on the side. And maybe we can see if there's a way to enter this vast vessel, explore the inside. And who knows, maybe we will find some very very interesting things. It could be from when the Kerbal race escaped Kerbin years and years and years ago, obviously billions of years in the past. That is one of the main storylines of the Beyond Kerbal Planet Pack is obviously the Kerbals originally started on Kerbal, but Kerbal just, or Kerbin even, 
but Kerbal decided to go supernova or some sort of astral phenomenon and completely eradicated that solar system. So that's why they are now over in the road system. Here I am, trying to get Cullum Kerman back on board the Manta and things weren't going well. Obviously I have misplaced that ladder and because of that, well, we cannot actually get on top of the wing. And because of the gravity of Kerman, the gravity of the situation, well, yes, we were unable to use our RCS packs and jumping to actually get back on. Luckily though, I was able to lower the landing gear and with that we were able to just jump on the nose of the Manta and get those two Kerbals back on board and safely back up into orbit. Now what we're going to do is of course try and plot our way back over to the EVE because we do want to bring this home. Obviously there is going to be a lot of science on this and we would rather get that home and, and of course the Kerbals as well. We don't want to be leaving any Kerbal stranded all the way to, uh, all the way out over a gateway. That would be terrible mismanagement of our space program. I'm sure we'd have a lot of things to answer for once we got back home, if we left with six Kerbals and only returned with three. So obviously gateway, the orbits around gateway, they're huge. This took a really long time to fine tune a maneuver that was going to bring us back to the EVE. And it did take me a very long time. There was a lot of fine tune and wiggling and eventually using the RCS on the ship, we were able to get back. However, this message popped up as soon as we arrived. And I thought, well, that's a bit weird. There's loads of supplies on the Eve. What's going on? So I perform my burn to slow down and we get back to the Eve. And this is the Coma Anomaly. What the hell happened? Where is half that ship? It's just disappeared. That should not have happened. There were radiators on there. Nothing should have overheated. But it did. And it exploded. So we're going to take a bit of a quick rewind there. And unfortunately, the last quick load or the quick save that I did was just before we went to comb. And this being at the end of my week of doing non-stop recording for Kerbal Space Program, I thought... You know what, I really can't be bothered doing that again. I'm just going to make sure the Kerbals are safe and we are going to head back to road. It's a little bit unfortunate because we do miss out on probably about one and a half thousand to two thousand worth of science points. But I was a bit fed up of Gateway by this point and I was really struggling and it was just really annoying that that happened. And yeah, I've had this problem in this save before where things have spontaneously combusted, but never at this magnitude. This was way, way worse than anything that had ever happened before. Obviously, we needed this entire vessel for us to get back home, get back to road. And we did lose three Kerbals there, which was, yeah, really bizarre. And I think if I ever do a mission like this again and I leave it and come back, one thing I might have to do is turn on the cheat that enables max part temperatures. We, we just get rid of those because, yeah, for some reason, things are overheating when they shouldn't be. And obviously, that is really bad for, well, basically everyone. We, we lost a lot there. But what we are doing now is burning back from Gateway. We have performed that burn and we are successful in our rendezvous. We do have to perform excuse me, a little bit of a deep space maneuver, which we are performing now, only 17 and a half meters per second, to get us rather close to road. We want to get as close as possible, you know, use that planet as much as possible for when we arrive and slow down. But there we go. We can see in 105 days, we will be safely returning the Eve to road. And there it is. Three years and 136 days after we first constructed the EVE, we are finally back at road. And it's just a case of firing up the Vern Pulse Vision engine one more time with me. Oh my god, I'm terribly sorry. My cold means that I can't speak. Oh, I, I, think, I think it's a chest infection. Give me a sec. Breathe, Kanasa, breathe. You can do the voiceover at your own pace. But yes, here we are firing that up and it doesn't take an awful long time for us to actually capture in a relatively circular orbit. But what we are going to do is go around the planet once again and just bring that down to 500 kilometers. And after that is done, 
We will detach the Manta and bring some of the crew home. Obviously, we've got to unthaw them first, which we are going to be doing right now. And then we will bring that crew home. Yeah, and everything will be good. And I was really excited to see how much science we got from this mission because I thought it would be an awful lot. Unfortunately, the Manta that we've got on there can only take four Kerbals down at once. So we are going to leave a couple of Kerbals on the interplanetary ship on the eve and we will be bringing up a craft at a later date just to recover them, probably at the very beginning of the next episode, because we don't want to leave them stranded on here for a while. Obviously, there is more than enough life support and all of that for us to leave them on there for a while, but, you know, they've, they've been a long way. They, they probably do want to get back home. But we were able to detach the Manta, and once again, as is always the case with these vehicles, we are able to perform a successful runway landing, although we do come in a little bit hot, and slightly spin off the runway. But with that, our mission to Gateway has been a complete success, except for the fact that we lost a load of science from not actually technically visiting Co. And we gained 9,330 science, which is fantastic. With that amount of science, that does mean that I am going to be able to go into research and development and unlock almost everything that I'm going to want for colonization purposes we're not going to be able to pick up the colonization node. However, I can now produce material kits and specialized parts on Armstrong if I so want to. And I think what I'm going to do in a live stream, possibly Wednesday this week, is design a new surface base in order for us to do that. And then finally, we will be able to not rely on road at all in this series, except for when we want to launch crew, which is something that I've been very excited for to get to this stage in the series. But yes, that will happen in future episodes. I hope you have enjoyed this one. If you have, why not give it a like? If you really enjoyed it and would like to keep up with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.